Welcome to Excel Business Statistical Analysis video number 26. And in this video, we want to see an accounting and finance example using a discrete probability distribution. Now we're on the sheet EVSD, Expected Value, Standard Deviation 1. And this is our accounting example. Now the accountants in the accounting department created this discrete probability distribution. This is unit demand. And these are the probabilities for the various units. So 800, the probability that that will occur is 0.2. 1,000, the probability is 0.15. And we want to make some cash flow calculations. And we have some numbers here. But we need to calculate the monthly order quantity. And we're not going to do accrual accounting here. We're going to just look at the cash flow. So the first thing we have to do is calculate from our discrete probability distribution what we estimate as the monthly order quantity. This would be the mean or the expected value. Now we have to multiply and then add two columns. So of course, we use sum product. These are all of the x values, comma. These are all the probabilities. That's this formula right here. We've been using it for the last couple of videos. Close parentheses. And it looks like the monthly order quantity is 790. That, in essence, is the average from all of these unit demands from the accounting department. Now, the standard deviation, we're not going to use it in our calculation below. But let's calculate it. And we're going to try and type this one out left to right. Last couple of videos, we did it step by step. We know we have to take the square root of the variance. And for the variance, we know we have to multiply and then add two different equal size columns. So we'll use some product. Array 1, we have to take in parentheses all the x values and subtract the expected value, the mean, close parentheses. Then we square it. That's the first array, which is the one column by the seven rows dimension, comma. Array 2, that's the probability, one by seven rows. And close parentheses, close parentheses when I hit Enter. That's our standard deviation. So we have a mean or expected value of 790 units with a standard deviation of 170 units. Now the price per unit, 125. Cost per unit, 60. And we know that we sold 500 units for cash. So the cash in. Well, the 500 units times the 125. Enter. Now, the cash out, and again, this is not accrual accounting, because in accrual accounting, we would match 500 units of revenue to 500 units of cost or expense. But we're interested in the cash flow. So that's the monthly order quantity times the 60 bucks. When I hit Enter, now I have cash in, cash out. So I make a simple subtraction to get the cash flow implication. There's the cash in, subtract the cash out. And when I hit Enter, 15,100. All right, so that's our accounting example using expected value and standard deviation. Now let's go over to EVSD2. And here we have a finance example. Now we have stock A, B, and C. And our job is to analyze each stock, figure out the return for each, and which one has the most risk. Now, for each one of the stocks, we've estimated, given what we predict the states of the economy could be. There's a 15% chance that the economy will boom and do really well, a 30% chance it'll do normal. Uh-oh. We're predicting bad times to come. There's a 55% chance that the economy is going to be bust. Now, these are the probabilities. And each of these are the returns we expect given the state of the economy. These are the x values. So to calculate the average return or the expected return, we simply take probabilities times our x. So we're going to use some product. Now, for array 1, each one of the stocks is going to use the probabilities for the economic state 
So we need to lock this reference so when we copy it to the side, it remains locked on B2 to B4. So we hit the F4 key. Now comma, array 2, here's the estimated returns for stock A. And that's a relative reference, so when we copy it to the side, it will move correctly to the next stock. Now we close parentheses, Control-Enter, and then copy it to the side. Go to the last cell and hit F2. We want to verify that the references are pointing to the correct location, and they are. So it looks like the estimated return is 3.25%. Here, it's less than 1%. That's like 2 tenths of a percent. And here, it's estimated to be 6.3%. So we might go with stock C because it has the highest return. But look at this. We might miss out on a 25% return for stock B. But if the probability is only 15%, maybe stock B is not such a good idea. But in order to really analyze these returns, we need to look at how risky the stock is. And standard deviation will measure the spread or the dispersion or the variation in the stock returns. In finance, standard deviation is a proxy for risk. So we'll use our formula. We have to take the square root of the variance. And to calculate the variance, we take some product. And in array 1, we take all of our x values as a relative cell reference and subtract the stock's estimated return, close parentheses. We have to square it. And I can already see I'm missing a parentheses right here. So I'm going to click. I need to isolate that subtraction and calculate that before I square it. Now I'm going to type a comma. And for array 2, here's the probabilities. And those need to be locked with the F4 key. Close on some product. Close on square root. When I Control Enter, there's the standard deviation or the risk for stock A. I'll copy it to the side, go to the last cell, hit F2. I'm checking to see if all the cell references are in the correct location. And they are. Well, it looks like this is 6.3, this is 15, and this is 3.6. So clearly, stock B has the most variation. And we can sort of eye this 25% all the way to minus 13.5%. And that's how a risky stock will work. In the good times, it's going to deliver a high return. In the bad times, well, it's going to go down a lot. Now, back in Chapter 3, we learned about coefficient of variation. We take the standard deviation and divide it by the mean. And because we're dividing, that'll tell us the standard deviation, or risk, per one unit of return. So we're going to take standard deviation and divide it by the mean. This is the risk for every one unit of return. So Control Enter and copy it to the side. So the risk for every one unit of mean here is 0.58. Here it's 1.9. Here it's 69. So stock B is very risky for every one unit of mean. Now in finance, they like to do the inverse they want to say, hey, what's my return for every one unit of risk? So here we'll take in the numerator the expected value, and we'll divide it by the standard deviation. And so we Control Enter, copy it to the side. And so here we get 1.7 for every one unit of risk, which is a much higher return than any of the others. All right, in this video, we saw how to calculate expected value and standard deviation from a probability distribution for a finance example and an accounting example. All right, our next video, we're going to talk about an amazing discrete probability distribution called the binomial distribution. All right, we'll see you next video.